Good morning and welcome to Online Church with Pastor D. I am really interested in what I have to share with you today, although I must confess that you may not like it a whole lot, but it is something that I think is very important. And, uh, you know, when you, when you start to have bad dreams the night before you preach, you tend to get the feeling that somebody is not pleased about what you're going to share. So I hope that what I share with you today will be such that it will really be a blessing to you. Uh, certainly it is intended to stretch you and bring you to a different level altogether. And that's what I'm talking about uh, as I have for the last couple of weeks. So it looks like everything is on and going all right. Uh, haven't seen any comments, but comments are there. Well, I'm not seeing any comments. So I know, I know what is causing me not to see the comments. Uh, so I will I will know what to do with that. All right. So this is Online Church with Pastor D. I'm here every Sunday morning, usually at 8 o'clock live on Facebook. Then at the end of the service, which is usually around 9 o'clock, the message is uploaded to YouTube. Some people have subscribed there. So they go to their church or they watch their broadcast uh, online and then they come and they watch mine. And I'm so grateful for all of you who tune in week after week and watch the broadcast and those, of course, who join me live and share your comments as we are ministering the Word of God. Um, you can find my YouTube channel where you also see my Reflections video, which is just 15 minutes, comes out every Wednesday morning at very early. And you can subscribe again and once a new message goes up, it will come out and you'll be able to see it you'll get a little red dot or something showing that your subscription has a new entry. You can find that on Pastor D or you can find it on Gospel Circle Barbados, which is the YouTube channel of Brother O'Neill who edits those 15-minute videos. If you want to contact me, just do so at phildbage at gmail.com or you can WhatsApp me at 1246255753. And I'm going to make a little announcement in just a moment. For those of you um, who respond to that announcement, you can use these to either the email address or my, my WhatsApp number, and you can contact me in this regard. Let me just say a very special happy birthday to Sonja. I already sent a message to you via WhatsApp, but I'm making she's there. Bless you, Sandra. Hope you have a wonderful birthday today. Um, much love. Uh, we pray God's blessing on you on your special day. Now, on February 13th, I began a message that I hope would inspire and bless you and give you a sense of what I believe God is saying to us today, what He wants to do in our lives, and, and maybe give you a sense of direction for 2022 we are already in the third month, coming on to the end of the first quarter of this new year. It has gone by so quickly. And a lot of what I share with you today will not be biblical exposition. Some of it will be biblical exposition, but that's the best way to preach. If you ever wonder what's the best way to preach, topical is not the best way. Uh, textual analysis is the best way to preach as you teach the Word of God, break it down so we can understand it. There is an element of that today, but some of which I'm sharing with you, as I have the last three times that I shared, is coming from my spirit. This is what I believe God is saying. And sometimes you cannot find a specific chapter or verse to uh, support what you believe God is saying. And there is definitely an element of that here in the message today. So just judge what I'm saying, seek God and ask God what is from Him indeed and what is for you and what is not for you and the rest you can just let it go by. I have started each of these messages with uh, four convictions that I have shared and uh, the fourth one I, I took out and then I put it back in and uh, it comes into play very much so today and as I go through these messages I see more and more how these convictions uh, are very clear uh, in what I'm sharing with you that God wants to do. So the, the first conviction I shared was Jesus is coming back soon. Myself and many other uh, brothers and sisters around the world believe that this is in fact the case. We cannot again prove it to you except from uh, scripture where, you know, it, there, there are certain signs that precede the return of Jesus Christ, or should I say the rapture of the church. All of those signs have been fulfilled. The rapture can take place anytime. 
um, and so it, it is a what you call a signless event it could happen without without warning and that's why we have to be prepared uh, one of the the ways in which we prepare is through water baptism now there may be some of you watching this broadcast who you've accepted the Lord you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you're not necessarily a part of any church but you've not been baptized and I want you to know Jesus himself was baptized he set the example for us and we also should be baptized the scripture tells us repent and be baptized for the remission of sins well online church with Pastor D is having its first water baptism coming up in a couple of weeks so if you are watching or you watch this at any point in time you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you're not baptized I'm not asking you to come away from your church or your pastor but those of you who kind of don't fall into that category and you want to be baptized you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ use either my email or my whatsapp let me know you're interested and we will begin a dialogue so that we can take care of that I do have one person already possibly two, possibly three, but if you're watching this broadcast today, you want to be baptized, uh, please let me know and we will arrange something for you. The baptism will take place on Browns Beach, uh, so if you're in the United States of America, this will not be for you. But for the others here in Barbados, it will be on Browns Beach, but we'll give you specific directions and details, as well as the date as to when this baptism will take place. Uh, the second conviction I shared or shared from is that God is positioning his people. The third conviction, which will come through again today in this message, is that God is preparing hearts. This is very, very, very important. Again, I can't give you a chapter and a verse, but it is a very strong conviction. The fourth one will also come into focus today. God is restoring or releasing wealth into his kingdom. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little later on uh, as I'm sharing with you some areas that I believe that God wants to move me and you, us, to a whole new level. Today's message is a whole new level four. All right, so the first I shared was God wants to move us to a whole new level in our thinking. Then I talked about our, our leadership. Uh, the third thing which was last week was in our faith. He wants to move us to a whole new level in our faith. I got quite a few comments about that. And then this week I'm sharing points number four and five. I'm going to share two points today. And the first is God wants to move us to a whole new level. Okay, I'll just give you three scriptures and you guess what I'm talking about. I'll see if my wife can guess because she's very smart, but we'll see what happens today. All right, so here we go. Don't look at me like that. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 10.31. 1 Corinthians 10.31. Amplified Bible. So then whether you eat or drink or whatever you may do, do all for the honor and glory of God. Matthew 5.16. Amplified Bible. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your moral excellence and your praiseworthy, noble and good deeds and recognize and honor and praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And First Peter 4, verse 10 and 11. Hope I'm not going too quickly, but this is just introductory stuff. New Living Translation. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? They speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. So from those three scriptures that I shared with you, can you figure out my fourth point that God wants to move us to a whole new level of... You got it? No, I didn't think she would get it, to be very honest with you. To a whole new level of worship. Worship. I know it doesn't sound connected, but it is, it is more connected than you realize. So God wants to move us to a whole new level of worship worship. I checked the Merriam-Webster dictionary for a definition of the noun worship and it said it had three things there. It had reverence offered a divine being or supernatural power. Also an act of expressing such reverence. That probably would be the verb. But anyway, uh, secondly it said a form of religious practice 
with its creed and ritual. I know you're not going to write down these definitions, but you can check the Merriam-Webster dictionary online. It is free, and you can find it there for yourself. What? Well, don't be mumbling when I'm talking to you. Right, hello. All right, and number three, extravagant respect or admiration for or devotion to an object of esteem. For example, this is what is given in the definition, worship of the almighty dollar. Uh, you know, there's some people who live and they worship money. You know what I'm talking about. Now, here, let me, let me state this categorically for you as the backdrop to what I am sharing. Remember the verses I shared before. All of us must come to a firm understanding that singing hymns and choruses is not the sum total of the biblical understanding of worship. Worship, as I mentioned in the definition, is ascribing worth or value to something or someone. So here it is. Hold on to this very, very strongly. Worship requires every aspect of our lives to be engaged in bringing glory to God and this on a day-to-day -day basis. That actually reflects the first three scriptures that I shared with you. Worship requires every aspect of our lives, every aspect of our lives to be engaged in bringing glory to God and this on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, that, that, as I said, forms really the backdrop uh, for what I want to say, say to you regarding God wanting to move us to a whole new level in our worship, or a whole new level of worship. Um, Mark 12, 28 to 31, New Living Translation. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate with Jesus, of course. He realized that Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? We know this. I've preached about it before. Jesus replied, verse 29, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself and no other commandment is greater than these. I, I've mentioned this in, in very specific context before, uh, and I've brought it here again to you, telling you that God wants to move us to a whole new level of worship. Uh, we, we, we just, just let me bring this one thing out here. Love the Lord your God with what? All. With all. Love, the, she got that one right. Love the Lord your God with all. With all. The spiritual and practical expression that was referred to in our definition from Merriam-Webster is called worship. So loving God with your all, the expression of that is called worship. You with me? All right, it's not hard to understand, but, but too, too often we, we, we limit worship, and I'll come to this again, but we limit worship to singing songs. We limit worship to raising our hands. We limit worship to uh, uh, shouting hallelujah. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's not worship. It is. But it is not the sum of worship. It is just one aspect of worship. And if you, if you take worship to be that one aspect, then you miss so much of what it really means to worship God. And God wants to bring us into that place. Let me... Let me break it down for you from the Word of God. Let me read it first from the King James Bible, Romans 12 and verse number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You're going to understand exactly what that means by the time I'm finished here in just a few moments. 
uh, from the amplified now, I'm going to break it down for you and expand it or expand it and break it down from the amplified Bible, that same verse, Romans 12, 1. So here we go. Put your thinking caps on. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God, all that God has extended to us through salvation, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. You know what decisive dedication is? In today's language, it's called intentionality. Make an intentional dedication of your bodies. Now, uh, in our today's English, in many years ago English, body referred to the physical body. That's not what this is referring to here alone. Follow with me. When the scripture says in Romans 12, 1, to make a, uh, a, a present your bodies or make a dedication of your bodies, be intentional of giving your bodies, is actually explained within the very body of this particular scripture. But it's talking about presenting all of your members and faculties. All of your members and faculties. All right? So your abilities, your talents, your gifts that we read about in the beginning of this point. Your abilities, your talents, your gifts, and your body. All of them. You present all of your members and faculties. Your entire person, your entire being is presented to God. We are talking about what? A whole new level of worship. Okay? So everything... It's going to get a little deep here, but hold on. Everything that you are and everything that you ever hope to be should be presented to God, according to the scripture, as a living sacrifice. This is where it starts to go a little below the surface, below the skin. So we're going to look at sacrifice first, and then we're going to look at living. So a sacrifice is a free and voluntary offering. All right? And uh, one of my favorite commentators that I refer to a lot, Albert Barnes, says this, and I want you to listen very carefully. I'll say it slowly so that we, we, we don't miss it. This sacrifice implies, please listen, that he who offers it presents it in its entirety which is what the verse is saying, all right? Releases all claim, all right to it and leaves it to be disposed of for the honor of God. So when you present your body, your faculties, your members to God, everything that you are, essentially what you are saying to God, I am giving you everything, and in giving you everything, I release all claim, all rights to everything that I am. And you, therefore, as this has been given to you, have the right to do anything you want with me. That's where it starts to get a little deeper than lifting your hands and singing a song. I give you express, exclusive right to do anything you want with all that I am. That, my friend, is a whole new level of worship. And, you know, essentially, I mean, the, the truth is, this has been in the Bible for from the start. But essentially... We have, to, we have to move away from this notion, this concept of worship is Sunday morning. We have to move away from that. That is, that is not even a, a real fraction of what God wants. He's saying, I want everything. I want it all. And when I want it all, I'm talking about as a sacrifice that you give up right to it. You give me full access to everything. I don't know about you, but there are certain things I like to keep for myself. There are certain things about me that I don't want to give up. Can I be real here? Can I be honest? There are certain things about me that I like a lot. The, yeah, the bad stuff, I don't mind giving that up. You can take that. But there's things about me that, that I think 
I think are nice. And, and I would like to, to hold on to them. And God is saying, if you want to truly worship me, you got to give me the bad. Well, let me put it this way. The good, the bad, and the ugly. you got to give me all of it. And take your hands off releasing me to do whatever I want. So when you think about this, beloved, we don't have the right to complain if we are worshipers. We don't have the right to complain if we are truly worshipers. You give up the right to complain because God is allowed to do anything and everything that he wants, not just with you, but with all of you, every aspect of you. The Barnes goes on to say, this is the offering which the apostle entreats the Romans, Romans 12, uh, to make, to devote themselves to God as if they had no longer any claim on themselves to be disposed of. Disposed of. When you finish with a Shafet box, you dispose of it. You, you have the right to throw it away if God chooses to throw you away or throw you to the lions or dispose of you you he has the right to do that with a worshiper he does not have the right to do that with somebody who sings worship songs you with me all right um to suffer and bear all that he might appoint simply this if in god's plan and purpose for you they're suffering. You are to submit to that suffering without complaint. Because you have given to God the right to do anything He wants with you. Beloved, there is no higher worship than this. You can sing to the top of your lungs. But when God knows that He has the right to you, to do anything he wants with you, which he really does have as your creator, but when you willingly, freely give him yourself and says, take me, do whatever you want with me, use me however you choose, dispose of me, let me suffer, let me be persecuted, whatever the case may be, let me have to give up my home in Ukraine and run across the border to save my life, whatever you want to do with me, you are welcome to do. And I tell you, as I'm saying this to you, I don't like this. I like to be in control. I don't know about you, but I like to be in control. Not that I'm controlling, that's different. But I like to be in control. I like to know I have money on the bank. I like to know my, my business is in order. I like to know that I'm in charge of my destiny. I, I, I like that. I feel good with that. When I don't have that, I get very cranky and very miserable. And I know there's some of you out there like that, but I like to be, I like to be in, in control of my stuff. All right. Um, he says, just let me finish this out, and to promote his honor in any way which he might command. So when he says, okay, do this for me, this will bring glory to my name, this will bring honor to me, that we do whatever God says we should do. Easy or not easy, fun or not fun. We do whatever God tells us to do. And then he closes by saying this. And I changed a word, but I'll tell you what I changed. He said, this is the nature of true religion. I changed the word religion to worship. This is the nature of true worship. Amen? And then, then the, that was the word sacrifice. But then I said we would then look at the word living. A living sacrifice. Do you realize that sacrifices were killed? No, no. This, this actually, this actually is, is a very beautiful uh, thought. Uh, painful, but beautiful. Uh, when, when you brought a lamb or a dove to be given as a sacrifice, what did the priest do? He killed it and then burnt it. Right, so the sacrifice was burnt. But what I never thought of until I, I had to prepare for this is that all the sacrifices of like animals and birds and so on were dead. But he says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. Never thought about that before, did you? Neither did I. 
You are to be, I am to be, we are to be a living sacrifice, which simply means that if you give a, I don't want to say you give a dead sacrifice, but your sacrifice is killed, then that's it. But a living sacrifice can be given every day of the week. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and the day after. Why? Because it's a living sacrifice as opposed to a dead sacrifice. So every morning you get up, you are a new sacrifice. Tomorrow, when you wake up, you are a new sacrifice. So you don't make the sacrifice and then you're finished with that. No, no, no. Every day, you offer yourself as a living sacrifice. So if the master wants to kill you on that day, <laughs> you you got to be willing to submit to that. I, I, I am kind of laughing to make it a little lighter. But the reality is, God says every day you get up, it is to be an act of worship in surrendering all that you are, ever hope to be, all that you want. You surrender it to me as a living sacrifice. And tomorrow morning you get up, you do the same thing again. I think that's very beautiful. But at the same time, it can be quite painful. So here we go. God wants to bring us to a whole new level of worship, all right? Um, the sacrifice must be holy, which is devoted or consecrated, um, without blemish or defect, spotless, free from sin. That's how it would apply to us, set apart, set apart from sin and set apart unto God. So we don't have the right to engage ourselves in sinful activity, as a matter of fact, we don't even have the right to engage in sinful thinking, far less activity. Because we are separated from sin and we are separated unto God and therefore our lives must reflect that. Well pleasing to God, acceptable to God, alright, this is good, I accept that, I receive that. And let me finish this now, this is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship so when you see uh, how, how is it put in the King James again it is put here as your where, where am I where am I right reasonable service when you see that that is actually saying your your intelligent service your rational service the, the word there for service actually means worship it actually means Worship. When it says your reasonable service, the, the Amplified says spiritual worship. All right. So when you give yourself to God as a living sacrifice, this is your actual intelligent, rational worship. Okay. And let me let me put it in context for you so you understand as I close this verse. Uh, the Jews, the Jews, when they made sacrifices to God, they were all external a lamb grain uh, oil whatever the case was these things that were given in sacrifice to God they were all external they, they were really not a part of the offerer or the giver of these sacrifices they were all something that was on the outside of them the difference here is that for a Christian our sacrifice is internal or should I say it proceeds from the internal, uh, grateful, rational, intelligent, intentional offering of ourselves in totality to God. That is our spiritual worship. So you can sing the most beautiful contemporary chorus or enjoy the richest experience of brokenness in a hymn, and not in any way actually, practically, offer worship to God. By the same token, you can help a widow, take care of an orphan, bless someone in dire need with a $500 gift, or indeed live a godly and righteous life. Share the gospel with someone who is lost and in need, and in, in so doing, truly and wonderfully worship your God, but never sing one note 
of a worship song. I hope you understood what I just said. So, so, so what, where I'm coming from is that God wants to bring us to a whole new level of, of understanding of worship and a whole new awareness of what it means to glorify and ascribe worth or value to Him in everything and in every way. And this will lead us into lives or lifestyles of worship that are, are not confined or restricted to 30 minutes of singing on a Sunday morning. Lifestyles that are punctuated with sincere and emotive expressions of how great thou art or the goodness of God or raise a hallelujah or my God is a conqueror. But all those songs would be coached proceed out of a lifestyle that seeks to bring glory to God at home, in the office, in traffic, on the bus, or the train, wherever you are, and in whatever circumstance you find yourself, good or bad. God wants to move us away from a surface worship and move us into a whole new level of worship that involves everything that we are, bringing our seeking to bring glory to Him wherever we are and whatever we do. Amen. Amen. That's the end of my first point. I've got one more point for you today. Uh, just about half of our time is gone, so let me go right into that one. God wants to take us to a whole new level in our receiving receiving you have so many preachers today preaching something that sounds like this but not this if God is going to move us to a whole new level of receiving he will first move us to a whole new level of giving Somebody in this room is very sharp this morning. A whole new level of receiving through giving. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 8, I will share with you in a moment. Let me give you the context. This was a situation where the saints in Jerusalem were called and considered poor saints. They were going through extreme hardship for a number of reasons. This is the reality if you check the background of it. And what happened was that the Corinthian church promised to give an offering to relieve and help the saints in Jerusalem who were having a hard time. And they had made this promise over a year before, but they had not followed through on their promise. And the the notion of their promise that was given actually spurred the Macedonians to also jump in and give. But the Corinthians promised to give. The Macedonians heard about it. They collected money and they sent the money to Jerusalem to help the poor saints. A year passed and the Corinthians had not fulfilled their promise. They were not diligent in what they were supposed to do. And so... Paul is actually lighting a fire under them and saying, guys, a year ago you promised to send some money to Jerusalem. Other people have come after you and brought their money in to bless the saints of God. Uh, it's time that you get yourself together. I'm sending somebody to collect the offering from you. That's exactly what happened here. So then uh, what Paul also does is that he encourages them. He didn't just rebuke them. He encouraged them to say, but God has promised that if you give, he will bless you. And so he gives this example in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 through 8. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart. This is a free will offering. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, even though Paul was kind of putting some fire around them. He said, I don't want you to give out of pressure. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. It's got to be something that comes from your heart. You don't give grudgingly to God. You don't, uh, no, no, you give, look, I'm happy to bless. I'm happy to give. I'm happy to help. And then verse 8, he says, and God 
will generously, listen to this, provide all you need. Now this is not tithes. This is nothing to do with tithe. This is an offering to help the poor, what we would call in olden days, almsgiving, A-L-M-S, almsgiving. You have tithes, you have offerings, and you have almsgiving. This is almsgiving. Nothing to do with tithes and offering at all. So, uh, Paul said to the church at Corinth, if you give alms, give to help and bless the poor and those who are needy, God will generously provide all all that you need and then you will always oh this is this is so exciting always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others now check the language there god will generously provide all that you need you will always have everything that you need and plenty left over to share with others now here is my question for you. Are we seeing this? Are we experiencing this? God wants to move us to a whole new level of this. Receiving blessing. But wherever you see this in the word of God, it comes through a whole new level of giving. And here, here's, here's what I sense in my spirit. Uh, as I share that fourth conviction, this is the one I had taken out and then I put it back in. Uh, God is restoring or releasing wealth into his kingdom. Uh, and let me tell you something. This, this is true. I received a phone call. I believe, yes, it was the day after I shared the first in this series. And it was a sister in the Lord. And she said, the first thing she said, Pastor, I have called to pray for you. Now, you won't know who this is. But uh, if she watches this broadcast, she will know that I'm referring to her. Pastor, I've called to pray for you. But be before I pray for you, I want to share I, I want to share something with you. And she was excited. She said, you know, I, I, I see uh, angels and I see visions and stuff like that, right? He said, I had a vision. I don't remember when it was, but it was probably the day before. When I, but she said, I had this vision, and I saw gold coins. Remember I told you about this? I saw these gold coins just rushing down, flowing down like sand on the back of a, coming off the back of a dump truck. Now, those of you who don't live in the islands like we do, you might not have any idea what I'm talking about. But most of us have seen a truck delivering a load of marl. Or a load of sand and how it, it runs off the back of the truck when, the, when the, 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 the back begins to lift up. And she said all these gold coins were coming down, coming down, coming down, all these gold coins. And she was so excited about it. She having a hard time, huh? And I said, did you watch my message yesterday? She said, no. And I opened the message and I read to her my fourth conviction. She says, and, and I saw diamonds. In between the gold coins and I saw crowns in between the gold coins and I said yeah you know why because this is not an ordinary blessing this is not ordinary wealth. this is significant wealth uh, and then then she was like wow you know this is amazing I said well, you go ahead and you pray for me because that's what's been in my spirit not recently you know this has been year going back years uh, four, five, six years going back uh, when I was at the People's Worship Center. That's what the, I felt the Lord speak to me. Uh, and then, you know, I, I'm saying, look, the world that we're living in is ripe, ripe for generous, selfless, even sacrificial giving. I, I, I get pictures from uh, I would have to say a buddy of mine in Moldova. Uh, I went on a mission trip in 2019 to Eastern Europe, Moldova. And almost not, not daily, but he sends these pictures of the, the Christians setting up tents for the refugees. Apparently there are over 2 million refugees who have fled the war in Ukraine. And Ukraine is right on top, bordering Moldova. So there, there are many, many Ukrainians who are running into Moldova. Moldova is not 
a wealthy country let me tell you that no and they have shown pictures of him coming out of the supermarket with really big heavily packed trolleys of food for the Ukrainian people not Ukrainian Christians but Ukrainian people who are running away from the war and trying to preserve their lives and the lives of their children their livelihood is gone but their lives are still there and um, I'll be honest with you I wish I could go to Ukraine and help bless those people this is the truth I wish I could be a part of that giving them sausage giving them food giving them meat giving them milk giving them something that will sustain it because they have nothing even if they have money they don't have anything and, and so we are living in a time, uh, COVID-19, uh, the, the newspaper tells us that the, the welfare claims have tripled in Barbados. Uh, and this is just one part of the world, one little rock where we live. Uh, uh, since 2020, a lot of people have lost their jobs and we gave out some baskets of, of, of goodies and, and food stuff and so on in, in December. Uh, we call it Jesus' Baskets of Love. And uh, people, people are in a very difficult place. And I, I wanted to do something again for Easter, but I don't think we'll be able to get ourselves ready for that. So we'll prepare for the summer where we will bless the, the youth and the children with back-to-school supplies and that kind of stuff. And we have uh, two churches, hopefully, that have come on board in the United States of America. Well, a church, yes, two churches. Um, they want to help us. Uh, bless uh, the children and the youth and so on. Um, the one is in the U.S. and one is in Canada. That's right. And then there's an, another lady working with the schools where we're hoping to set up a partnership between schools in the U.S. and schools in Barbados where we can get supplies coming in to bless our needy children here in Barbados. I think this is really, really very, very exciting and I'm looking forward to being a part of that. So, let me see how my time is going. So, here is what we're talking about. We're, we're living in a, in a time in 2022 where there is much need, there's much opportunity to give, as I said, generous, selfless, even sacrificial giving. And God wants to bring us to a place where He can give more to us. But I think part of the problem is that we're not giving out. And in a sense, this is just my own words, we kind of block up the blessing. Is it Our coffers are, I don't want to say full, but you understand? The blessing needs to flow. You give out, God blesses you. You give out, God blesses you. And it, and it revolves like that. And so uh, when you get to a place where you kind of stop giving, God tends to do the same thing. So he wants to pour the blessing through you. But if it's not moving through you, then... He's going to stop pouring it into you because it is not going through you. Um, tomorrow in Barbados is, this is Monday, the, what, what date is tomorrow? The 14th of March, 2022. Tomorrow is the budget day. And there are people who are calling for an ease. And when I saw that in the newspaper yesterday, I thought, how are we going to get an ease with what's going on in the world today? Uh, things are rough and they are going to get rougher let me move on Luke 6 verse 38 Luke 6 38 New Living Translation these are the words of Jesus himself give and you will receive your gift will return to you in full pressed down and shaken together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. My understanding is that the garments in those days had a, a flap or a fold in the front that could be opened up to receive um, an item or money or whatever you, you wanted to transport. So it was actually built into your garment that you could open this flap or this fold and you could put stuff in it. So when it says that men will give into your bosom, that's what they're talking about, into this fold or flap in your garment. Um, sorry, where are we? Right. Uh, Pour it into your lap. The amount, the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. The principle here is give and it shall be given. Give and you shall receive. 
you will always receive more than you give. But please know, this is extremely important, God never said when. <laughs> he didn't say give today and you'll get tomorrow. He didn't say give today and you'll get today. He never said that. He said give and you will receive. But you will receive in his time. All right, and I'm going to show you another side of that as we head down towards the end of this point and this message. So, here's what I believe with all of my heart. About probably 10, 15 years ago, God spoke to some men, some ministers, and He said to them what I said to you in the beginning in my fourth conviction, that He wanted to pour wealth into the kingdom. Uh, and I think the, the, these are mostly the proponents of the faith movement. All right? But this is, this is just my opinion. Please take it as that. I think what happened was that these guys genuinely heard from God. And God did begin to pour wealth into the kingdom. Supposedly through them. But what happened was they kept a lot of that wealth for themselves. One of the ministries that I, I was looking at before I share this message, they have five private jets. Five. It's kind of having five cars, but five Bugattis. You can only drive one car at a time when you think about it. But five, five jets. And trust me on this, jets are not cheap. Jets are not inexpensive, but they have five jets. Um, one of them, who has actually ministered in Barbados, I understand, um, on his return from a ministry trip, told the pilot to divert and go to a specific country where he proceeded to rent a hotel room for 10,000 US dollars a night. Now, there's, this is what I'm saying to you. Remember I said in the beginning that God is preparing hearts? God is preparing hearts of men and women, not necessarily ministers, but men and women who will understand why he is giving this wealth right men and women whose hearts are not inclined no i don't think there's anything wrong with driving a nice car i don't think there's any wrong anything wrong with living in a nice house i don't i don't see anything wrong with that as a matter of fact i told my wife just the other day that when i read in i believe it's revelation chapter 22 but somewhere near the book end of book revelation and when you read about heaven and what God is preparing for us for eternity. Let me tell you, it's lavish. It is, it is extravagant. And I, I sincerely don't believe that God has any problem with his people enjoying uh, a bit or slice or taste of extravagance on the earth. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when that becomes your goal, when that becomes your heart's desire, when that becomes your push and your drive, God says, no, I don't, I don't, need, I don't need hearts like that. I need hearts that are are not really moved or interested in that kind of stuff, who will be willing to take what they have and use it for the furtherance or the establishment of my kingdom on the earth, to do what needs to be done uh, as we are in the end times. And so I believe that is why God is again uh, preparing to pour out great wealth into his kingdom, but he has hearts that are prepared uh, to do what he wants done with that great wealth. And this for me is very exciting. I hope I'm one of them, but it really does not matter. So I believe God is about to fulfill his promise uh, based on a principle which he challenged the Israelites with in Malachi 3, verse 10 through 12. Let me find it here for you. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, if, if you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. Maybe 
we're going to see all those gold coins coming down like running off the back of a truck with diamonds in between and crowns and so on. And then he says, try it. Put me to the test. And now here's the other side I want to bring out to you. God says in this particular context, he says your crops will be abundant. He didn't say I'm going to give you a lot of money directly. He said your crops will be abundant. For I will guard them from insects and disease. This is incredible. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. And then all nations will call you blessed. For your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. In other words, I will bless you, but I will not necessarily bless you primarily with money. I may bless you by granting you a great home life. I may bless you with success and excelling in your work. It will translate eventually to Prosperity, yes, but let us, let us not push or present prosperity as the goal. Let us present worship, how about that, as the goal. Giving as the goal. And then God chooses in his time to bless you, to bless me, to bless us, whenever he chooses to do so. And on the way to that blessing, there will be times that you will not have you will go without. You will still see the provision of God. You will still see the blessing of God, but not to the extent that he intends to give you. And I'm not dangling a carrot before you, you know, yeah, you can get rich, you can get wealthy. I'm not dangling that before you. Not one iota. What I am saying to you is God wants to move us to a whole new level of receiving, but he wants us to learn to give. 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 Do you know that some people have stopped giving to their churches? Some people have made a decision. I mean, they've actually made a decision. I'm not giving to my church anymore. I'm not giving to God's work anymore. Well, if you expect to be blessed with that, good for you. But see, these are not days to stop or hold back. On the contrary, and, and watch, some people may have stopped giving to provide for themselves, to prepare for themselves. Well, that deals with last week's message about a whole new level of faith. Where you decide that you become your own provider. And God says, no, you do what I tell you to do, walk in obedience, you give. Trust me, and I'm not saying to be foolish here, don't, don't get me wrong. But trust me to be your source. Trust me to be your provider. So you do what you know is right. You do what you know God expects of you. You give, you share, you bless, you, you, you take care of those who are in need. And God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a stream of gold coins with diamonds in between and crowns and so on. I mean something that you've never experienced before. And that is actually what Malachi 3 says. I will pour the blessing that you will not have room to contain it. That's what the scripture is saying. Let me move on down. Our time is pretty much gone. And I'm almost there at the end. So Mark 12, my last scripture for today. Mark 12 verse 41 through 44. God wants to move us to a whole new level of receiving. We will get there. We will move there through giving. Some of you have been giving for years. God is about to pour out a blessing upon you. So Mark 12, 41 to 44, New Living Translation, my last scripture. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds drop in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Woo, wonderful. Then a poor widow came. Widow. All right. The men were the bread earners in those days. A lot of the women, very few of the women actually worked. Poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. They call them mites. Two small coins. Jesus called his disciples. Fellas, come here. See this widow? I tell you the truth. Those are my words. Right? I tell you the truth. 
this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. That bears up what I was telling you just a few moments ago. It also bears up what I was telling you regarding worship. The woman gave everything she had to live on into the offering at church. <laughs> I'm not telling you to do this. You, you do stuff like that when you believe the Lord is telling you to do it. You know, I can't preach stuff like that until you go and do that. Thank God I don't tell you to go and give to my ministry. But here's what I am telling you. Give. Don't hold back. Don't stop giving because God wants to pour out a blessing on you. He wants to move you. He wants to move me to a whole new level of receiving. But he's going to do so if you are faithful, diligent in giving. So the widow's might was not about the amount given, but the sacrifice that was made. That is where the rubber meets the road. Beloved, God's end time program will require large sums of money. And hearts that are prepared to be obedient and to give generously and in the will of God to see God's agenda established, worked out, fulfilled in the earth. God wants to move us, us, to a whole new level of worship and a whole new level of receiving through giving. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, your truth, your reality. Thank you, Lord, that we have been brought to the kingdom and brought to the earth for such a time as this. And Lord, I do believe with all of my heart that we, in the midst of very trying and difficult circumstances, will see the glory of God in many of our lifetimes. We will see, O oh God, as we give ourselves to worship in the true biblical sense of the word. Yes, as we sing our songs, as we declare, Lord, in the, in the atmosphere, our worship unto you, uh, we ascribe worth and value to you, we will see your glory. But Lord, you are calling for us to be living sacrifices, not just singers. You're calling on us to give, maybe even give till it hurts, so that you can turn around and bless us and pour out all these gold coins upon our life. Father, I pray that not one person will be a victim of a selfish, greedy spirit. That none of us will go after Wealth and riches, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. God, I pray that you will deliver us and protect us from any such spirit. But that you will prepare our hearts truly to handle the wealth of the kingdom, to distribute the wealth of the kingdom, to give the wealth of the kingdom where it needs to go, to apply, oh God, to situations that are in need of your blessing and bring glory to your name through our giving, through our generosity, through our faith, and through our worship. For God, we acknowledge that giving is also a part of our worship. Because all that we have belongs to you. And we give it to you, O oh God, today, and ask you to be pleased with our worship. Be pleased with our giving. Be pleased, O oh God, with our lives and our lifestyles. And may they truly Cause men and women, as they see the light of our lives, to glorify our Father who is in heaven. So help us today. Bless us today. Provide for us, O oh God. There are many who are in difficult situations, difficult circumstances, and we pray for your rich blessing today. But God, whatever we need to do, before those blessings come our way, grant us, O oh God, the courage the faith, the wisdom, 
and the obedience to release, to let go of ourselves, who we are, what we want to be, hope to be, and all that we have. Given unto your work and unto your kingdom. So we give you praise and we give you thanks today. I declare a blessing on your people who will watch this broadcast. But Lord, remove any wrong spirit from our lives. And let us truly be set apart from sin and unto your glory. That our lives may reflect your glory and your goodness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and I'll see you next Sunday for a whole new level five. Join me, 8 o'clock next Sunday morning. Remember, if you are not baptized and you're looking to be baptized, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not asking you to leave your church or your pastor, but if you are not in that situation where there's someone there, I am going to pre prepare for a baptismal service in a few weeks' time. You use the information at the beginning of this video and you can um, uh, get in contact with me let me know you were interested in being baptized in water. God bless you and I'll see you next Sunday morning.